What is it that you choose to touch and look at more than anything else in your daily life? <laughs> it's okay. The answer is probably your mobile phone. And hey, you're not alone. Welcome to my generation, the mobile generation. There are around 7 billion people on the planet today and around 6.8 billion mobile phones in use. Almost everyone has access to one and some have access to more than one. I'd like you to remember this as I tell you my story, the story of the gift of a lifetime of curiosity for a natural wonder. I grew up in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, during the 80s. Ooh, gotta love the 80s. And the nature that surrounded me, oh, and these were the days before mobile phones were even cool. Can you imagine taking a selfie with this? <laughs> now, the nature that surrounded me on a daily basis consisted of magpies, crows, garden snails, and a green caged budgie named Bobby, who I loved. 90% of Australians and over half of the world's population today experience a similar version of nature in their daily lives. But fortunately for me, I grew up with this man as my father, a Spanish boy who boarded a ship destined for Australia and an urban explorer was born. My dad was known for always telling his kids to get outside in the fresh air and appreciate nature instead of watching that stupid thing. But Dad, it's cold. Put a jumper on. But Dad, it's raining. Put a coat on. But Dad, frozen rain is falling from the sky. <laughs> Put a bucket on your head and take one for your brother. <laughs> now, my dad didn't just say these things. He lived by it. And not the bucket on your head, the get out in nature and experience it. And each year, he packed up the family Mazda, my mum, brother, sister and I, and we set off on long car journeys through central New South Wales and Queensland, headed for the coast. In 1985, our destination was the Great Barrier Reef. My dad read an article in the National Geographic magazine about the creation of the marine park, and he just had to see it with his own eyes. So after days and days and days, of driving, the day of our reef trip finally arrived and we boarded a large boat and set out across the open ocean. After what felt like forever, the boat came to a stop and we looked out the window and saw multicoloured turquoise water with what looked like golden rocks sitting on the surface. We were given these special reef shoes and encouraged to walk around on the coral and see what we could find. And for someone that had spent time painting garden snails to make them look beautiful, this was incredible. It only got better. At one point, my dad took me over to where he'd been snorkeling in the deeper water, and he placed his mask over my eyes and encouraged me to look into the water below. I looked down and I saw the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. A busy underwater city with lots of interesting faces and bizarre shapes, all going about their business. My new favourite place on Earth had been found and my curiosity was ignited. We had the best day ever that day and only managed to take four photos. <laughs> Mostly because the camera wasn't waterproof, but also because we were busy making memories. Memories that have lasted for 30 years. I held on to my memories of the Great Barrier Reef and I moved to Townsville to study marine biology to try to find all the answers to the questions that I had from that day. And what I found instead was that for every answer, I found a hundred new questions because little did we know that that day back in 1985, we'd stumbled upon one of the planet's true natural wonders. I learnt so many amazing things about coral reef biology and about the scale of the Great Barrier Reef. And I learnt that if this rug I'm standing on here today, which is about a metre and a half by a metre and a half, was the surface of the planet, 
And 70% of that is ocean. And 30% is land. So if we were to push all of the countries into the top quarter and a little bit of the rug, then the rest is ocean. And within this ocean, if we pushed all the coral reefs together, it would make up less than a quarter of a percent of that whole area, about the size of this tiny thumbtack that I'm holding. And yet somehow, as if by miracle, this tiny place is built by even smaller animals called corals that have built a structure that in places can be seen from space. And not only that, but a quarter of the ocean's marine life call it home. All within this tiny thumbtack. Now that's significant. I finished my marine biology degree and eventually got a boat, as I got a job on a boat with the title of marine biologist. And I've taken hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to see the Great Barrier Reef from all walks of life. And I've seen them change right in front of my eyes. I've watched their wonder and I've felt their joy. I've seen grown men be reduced to, to children. I've seen polished women forget about their hair and makeup and just enjoy the moment. I could tell you many stories about my time on the Great Barrier Reef as a visitor, a student, a biologist, a guide, and now a reef manager. Like what it's like to turn up twice a week to a reef and be greeted by Wally. One of the most beautiful faces I've seen. And then have him swim by my side for hours like a friend. Or this sometimes grumpy character that I used to enjoy teasing by placing a piece of coral sand in her perfectly manicured garden that you can see in the front of the image. And I'd watch her give me a death stare and dart over and pick it up with her mouth and move it out of her garden. Or what it's like to see a big, fat, healthy coral trout swagger past you on a coral reef like she's the queen of her domain. or having a wise old turtle come up close enough to stare straight into your soul. And the beauty of hovering weightless above a healthy coral garden. And then to see this place that I know so intimately and love from the air and try to take in the enormity of it all, 3,000 individual reefs how many other Wallies are going on about their daily lives down there? It blows my mind. I've seen things and I've had experiences that money can't buy, machines can't make, and humans can't even imagine. But I'm not sure if people have time to hear my stories anymore or if my stories are important. In about 2003, I started noticing that people coming on boats to the Great Barrier Reef had something in their hand that they were holding on to preciously that they didn't have the year before. And they'd be doing this. They'd soon lose phone reception and put their phone away and enjoy the day. But that was just the beginning. Mobile phones are everywhere with everybody, all the time, doing these ones. And now, if you're not doing these ones, then you're that weird person <laughs> looking at people doing these ones. <laughs> and this got me thinking, if people could be in the presence of the unique global beauty of the Great Barrier Reef and be distracted by their phone, then what else are they missing out on in their daily lives? Mobile phones have become slick and trendy extensions of the human hand, and we use them for any number of important things, but increasingly to distract ourselves from the world around us. We place images of the things we love on them, 
and yet spend more time looking at those things on a screen than interacting with them when we're in their presence. This is my son, and I'm worried that if the children of today care more about a replaceable piece of man-made technology than a climbing tree in their backyard or local park, then how are we going to expect them to care about the ancient forest they require for the air they breathe tomorrow? I don't know who I would have been if on that day back in 1985, I was busy doing these ones. And I lost my dad a little while ago, and I never got to tell him this story or thank him for the gift of a lifetime of curiosity. Probably because I was busy doing these ones. So I've got an idea. You know that thing that you choose to touch and look at more than anything else in your daily life? Make the choice sometimes to put it down and pick up your reality and live in it. It might just blow your mind. And those of you that can, and you know who you are, get out there and see the Great Barrier Reef. It will blow your mind. Thank you.